Hello everyone, welcome back to FAQ. This is FAQ episode three. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, some some of these jokes might go over your head. Um, I'm your host, William Mollendor. And I'm your co-host, Andrew Ferris. Now this might shock you all, but we actually have fans. And with fans, I'm fan art. And we're gonna put some of them up. Okay, first piece of fan art by Mr. Tristan Slice. I oh. wonder what type of tacos those are. Yeah. They're, they were there... tortillas. Yeah. yeah. Next one by Milo Smith. This one's, this one's awesome. I like this one. Yeah? Because it's me. That is you. It is me. No, no Andrew, because Andrew doesn't exist. This next fan art is by Lynn Miller, and it features a heart. And then another heart, and then a smiley face. I love FAQ. Well, hey, who made this one? Uh, this, this fan art is really good. Whoever made this fan art should get paid like six million dollars for it. Do you see all the details on that jersey right there? If you zoom in on it, you can see that's actually a Carolina Panthers jersey, and it even has like fingernails. None of the other ones had fingernails on. If you zoom in on it real close, that's uh, Andrew's fingernails and William Mullendore's uh, crooked teeth, which is accurate to real life. This next piece of fan art is... <gasps> there we go. There's the intro. That's the intro? That's the intro. I think that works. Well, what is that? <laughs> is that our logo? First question time. <gasps> Andrew, where's the hat? <gasps> no way. This question. Chains <laughs> or churches? I think canes are better. You think canes are better? I think churches are better. I, th I think that's a pretty easy um, argument. But, but here, I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out. I'll, I'll give you a fair shot. So why, why are canes better? Well, I mean, they're a vital tool to help the injured and the disabled, mm -hmm. and you can't really... You, people need canes in order to walk. Actually, I don't think people need canes. They're, they're very outdated. I mean, people still need canes. Mm -hmm. But there are a multitude of newer and better inventions. There's wheelchairs, there's prosthetics, there's those, uh, like, roller or the walkers. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, like, that... Like, canes are needed very much. They're needed for, like, blind people and stuff. But, I mean, there's just better inventions coming out. And they're just getting, they're old, they're outdated. They're just sticks. Exactly. I mean, if they're just sticks, they've been sticks for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Why don't you think they've changed? Why do they still exist? Canes are just stylish. They're elegant. People dance with canes. People don't dance with walkers, unless you're like a very cool grandma. Mm, that would be odd. I've seen a good fair share of cool grandmas dance in walkers. Really? Yeah, like my grandma. Okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like, I just, I, I feel like you're just lacking, like lacking proof that canes are better well, than churches. Well, what do churches have? Churches, first of all, they have pipe organs. One okay. of the best, awesomest coolest instruments they are one of the best, they're, they're awesome, awesome coolest instruments um religion I, I mean canes aren't stated in the constitution religion is second or first amendment right there's not uh, there's not a uh, but there's a separation between church and state which doesn't need to be explicitly mentioned for canes Ooh. there's not a separation between canes and state in the constitution How about that's that? that's true um, religion is important to people. It is. I mean, they're both vital things, but I, I, yeah. I think churches are better. Uh, they, all right, how many people can fit inside of a can? Not very many, unless it's like a, a big, a big, a can. large cane. Yeah. Probably like. Uh, churches can hold a lot of people. They can hold a lot of people. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a slight downside. It, it, I mean, it does take a longer time to build a church. Yeah. But that just means, I mean, it, it takes more effort. 
it's more pleasing to the community at large. Churches are for the community. Canes are for the people. And I think we need to support the community more than just a couple, or I guess some people. What, 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 are, what are communities made out of? People. Oh, he got me there. Have you ever, do you know that some canes have swords in them? I saw it in a movie once. I don't remember what movie, but I saw it in a movie. It was really cool. So what are you telling me? Our churches are peaceful and canes are violent? You could kill someone with a cane. You can't kill True. somebody but with you a know church. How many, I guess how you many, could. How many wars have been fought because of the church? That's true. There has been a lot of... There have not been many Ooh. wars fought over canes. And your churches are better. Okay, that's the... That's the I'm at my boiling point. Okay? Your boiling point? I'm at well, my you know what? Point. I think canes are better. Excuse me. What, oh, you see, this is what I think. Canes you're, are better. You're a chump. You can't even keep your microphone on. I think that automatically means I win. I think canes are better. You think canes are better? Canes are immensely better. Actually, guys, we're talking about the restaurants, <laughs> the chicken oh. joints. Oh, oh, that makes so much more sense. What? That makes so much more sense. I, I, I just... We're fools, Andrew! Uh, well, in that case... You know, we're geniuses for thinking outside the box. Yes, this is FAQ. And we're the sm smarterest people in the world. No one gets smarter than us. Um, <laughs> in that case, I like Kane's chicken more. I like churches. Well, ain't that just well and dandy? That's swell. High five! <laughs> it's question two time. Question two. All right, let's, uh, I think it's time to draw a question, right? Draw a question. Uh, I think, I think you should draw this one. You think I should draw yeah. it? Yeah. You sure? I'm quite sure. Okay. No. No. Choose this one. Oh, okay. Thank you. What is the longest word of any spoken language longest word in any spoken language that should yeah. be pretty easy yeah. do you think you could just google that real yeah, quick i probably could i mean it's i mean it's, it's a simple enough question i don't see no. this will be easy So, you may have heard of words like anti-disestablishmentarianism at 28 letters or supercalifragilistic espialidocious at 34 letters, but you may be surprised to learn that these are nothing compared to the longest word in any spoken language. The longest word in English in any major dictionary, mm -hmm. I have to clarify this, is uh, numino ultramicroscopic silico volcano coniosis. Numino ultramicroscopic silico volcano coniosis. Yes, th which is a lung disease caused by inhaling quartz dust, and it is 45 characters long. That's a few characters. That is a few characters. Nice. I think only like, um, how many characters in FAQ? Like six? Just about. There's me, you, Mario, uh, well, I guess I guess I guess there's gonna be a lot more characters introduced. Yeah. The longest military term currently in use is um. Hold on. Vasta tykistä maalin osoitus tutkakalusta järjestelmä insinööri erikoisupseeri. Did you get that? That was perfect pronunciation, Andrew. Oh, thank you. I'm, I've been working on it a couple of weeks. Um, wow. Anyway, so. This this very, very, very long term translates from Finnish to counter artillery targeting radar systems engineer specialist officer and contains 71 characters. Wow. The longest word of any spoken language. Okay, finally. Okay, continue. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to because you cut me off. I'm sorry. I'm, we've been waiting for this. The longest word in any spoken language. Verified by the Guinness Book of World Records, which isn't always the most accurate, but it is for this case. Is. What is it, Will?
Nirantaran fakarita digantara kandala damanda sutara sabindu sandra tara kana kana vrnda sanda fakara rayanda mana makaranda bindu bantura tara makanda tara pula talpa palpa mudula sikataya ala yala mula tala marutra kamila dala kula kula yakala tara moya pano yala kabala kakara vinda galanti kagala dala lava gapala kana sara kartur. That is amazing, Will. Thank you. That is amazing. Good job. Thank you so much. I spent so many, so many long days and nights studying that. With no native speakers, Sanskrit is one of the oldest Indo-European languages and it's the sacred language in the religion of Hinduism. The Guinness Book of World Records states that this compound word describes the region near Kansi, Tamil Nadu, India. The longest name for a chemical compound is it's too long to pronounce. Um, frequently and thankfully it is shortened to another really long word, which I'm gonna try to pronounce, but Oof. might not be able to. I think it's Chitui. Uh, Hold on, I, I, I got this. Titan. That was perfect pronunciation again. We are on a roll today. Yeah. That was. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. I'm so <clears throat> proud of us. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> Just leave me in the dust again. <laughs> okay. Frequently and thankfully shortened to Titan, this compound is a protein found in the human body, and it takes roughly three and a half hours to pronounce the full name. It takes 42 pages of text to spell out. We're going to give you just like, a, like, like not even a quarter of it, just, just here. <laughs> Just no stop. <laughs> because chemical compounds have no clear character limit, more complex compounds like a molecule of DNA could hypothetically end up being magnitudes larger. Wow. Luckily, no one has made it their mission to create such a word, so. Yeah, yeah just, just wait. Just wait. I think I'm about to cook well, a cook well, pretty long word. Don't. Similarly to the case of Titan, agglutinative languages allow for the creation of endlessly compounding words, which, and such languages include Finnish, Hungarian, and Korean. Meanwhile, in non-agglutinative languages, this type of endless compounding is rare, but it's still very possible in select circumstances. One popular example in English includes a term like a uh, Great 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 grandfather, where you can kind of just keep adding the greats forever. Mm -hmm. Just be, en to the be first endle one. endlessly great, yeah. yeah. Um, just like me. This type of endless compounding might hurt our quest to find the world's longest word. Ultimately, this means that the longest word possible in any spoken language has never actually been spoken, which means that a word can't be a word until it's been spoken. And that we could hypothetically create our own world's longest word. Okay, time for question three for episode three. Ooh, let's, let's this get into is awesome. Three threes. Actually, it's only two threes. Wait, what? <clears throat> top ten teachers. Okay, before we rank the top ten teachers, I think. We need to set the ground rules of how we're going to be basing this ranking off. It's going to be like a like a scientific 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 ranking, unbiased as well. I'll say nineteen. Just. I guess. 19. It is 45 letters. What? Do you have any idea or guess of what the word could be? I think it might be supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Pneumo-macroscopic silico-volcano coniosis. Thank you. <laughs> the the pronunciation. I, I want to say thirteen, but I feel like that's not right. Say twenty-three. Twenty-three forty-five. 
I hate you. <laughs> Do you have any idea what the word could be? <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue. <laughs> Not a clue. Oh my god. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my pronunciation. Um, can you guess what the word means? No. <laughs> Did you forget I teach government? Will you use this in your everyday? Never. Never? I will never think of this again. I will never say this again. I will use the word volcano. <laughs> and maybe ultra microscopic. Super <laughs> Uh is it thirty one? Close. Ooh. Do you know what the word is? No. Can you guess what the word is? Well, I thought it was supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Do you still think it's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Numano ultra microscopic silvo silico volcano cenosis? Okay, that is a very long word. Oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Mostly because it's small particles uh, being inhaled in most of quartz is either made up of carbon or silicone uh, as a compound, and so when you inhale them, I assume, go into your lungs, and if they are, you said cancer-causing, uh, or something along those it's, lines? It's a lung disease. Yeah. Um, so, if it's made by inhaling quartz, it's probably due to silicone. So that's where that part came in. I couldn't figure that out. So that kind of, that does make sense now that I put the pieces together yeah. a little bit. 32. It's 45. Do you know what the word is? Absolutely not. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> Here, just, you can take this. <laughs> okay, this word is pneumono ultra min coniosis. Uh, I saw something about uh, volcanoes and scoliosis, scoliosis, so some sort of uh, spinal issue involving volca volcanoes. The master's degree, I'm not sure it's going to help for this. I feel like it's going to be really wild, so I'm going to just say something insane. 32. Close. It is 45. Can you guess what the word is? Absolutely not. I have no idea. If you just had to give a guess, what would you say? Cat. Okay, so it starts off and it's kind of like, it looks like Fumano Ultra Microscopic Silicovolcano Ocona, <laughs> I don't know the last part at all. Okay. I have no idea on the last part. Okay. Can you guess what the word means? I'm gonna assume it's something medical because medical tends to have words like that where you just want to cry. <laughs> But the fact that there's volcano in it is weird. So I'm assuming it's something to do with maybe a reaction that people have to volcanoes that causes some kind of issue. I'm just a genius, okay? It's a master's degree. <laughs> okay, all right. You got a little nervous. Longest? Yeah. I'm going with 32. 32? Yeah. Pretty close. It's 45. Oh, man. I was getting, okay, okay. If you had to make a guess, what would you say? I be <laughs> What'd you got? Okay, can you? Uh, how dare you? No, can no, you you're not. Can you try and pronounce no, it? No, you're not. No, my, no, ultra, microscope, seal, volcano, con, neosis. Pretty how, close. How do you pronounce it? <sighs> Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Ah, yeah, if I could practice all day, I'll sound yeah. as sweet as you do. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess it's an issue with the lungs. Yes. In which something very small acts like a volcano and like spews substances that. Silicone? In, in the you're, lung you're, or the blood? You're right on it. It is a lung disease caused by inhaling quartz dust. Oh, man! Yeah, if I had all day, I'd figure it out, too! <laughs> okay, hold on, take that. I'll take this. There we go. Longest English word appearing in a major dictionary. Let me count it out. We'll go with 35. 
that's close. It's 45. <laughs> hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stow upon you. 40? Okay. We're hunting teachers. Because they've, they've all, you, you gotta hunt them. Well, they're all gone. <laughs> Thirty-five. Thirty-five. It is forty-five. Numano, ultra microscopist, silicovalo, nakona. I. Jeez. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Do you feel like you'll use this knowledge? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's gonna be forgotten in ten seconds. <laughs> How many characters? Um, I'm gonna go with forty-nine. Okay, pretty close. The answer is 45. There you go. Oh boy. Yep. Do I, can I say it slowly and sound like an idiot, or do I have to say it like real speed? Say it whatever way you can. Pneumo, don't laugh, that's not going to help. Pneumo, no ultra microscopic silicovolcano coniosis. That was really close. That was really good. Yeah, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew will Go. say it out loud. I'll try it. Okay. You need to see it? I need to see it. Okay. Okay. Numino Ultra Microscopic Silica Volcano Coniosis. What does it mean? You know? uh, it's a type of lung disease. How do I know you didn't make this up? Oh, you did it in color, though. That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you watching at home, I had it in all black and white. This is in color. Not okay, pr even pronounce it now. Pneumo Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis. Perfect. Bam! So how do you feel after being bestowed with such important knowledge? Um, I feel like you cheated. <laughs> Um, but I do feel like I've gained a little bit of knowledge. Am I going to remember the word? No. Am I going to remember parts of it and why it was formed? Yeah, so now I know. Okay. And you said it's 45 letters? 45 letters. Okay, I might win a bet someday on that. <laughs> a, a, what? a punk. I see a punk we need to interview. Hold on. Like a punk rocker? Yeah, punk rocker. Hold on, I see a punk we need to interview. I mean, there's peanut butter sandwich right here, sir. Right here. It's really yummy. Um, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, free snack time if you go to the lunchroom. Uh, yeah, what's up? what's up? We were just asking Bertonson what he thought the longest word was. Um, well, I don't think peanut butter is the longest word. No? But I know a few languages that might have the longest word. Oh, no, the longest English word, sorry. The longest English words, so no, like, Welsh stuff. No. Um, is it, like, a chemical compound? Uh, Lent. <laughs> the meat and carrot. You eating carrot? This meat I don't think great. that's a long... Oh, yeah, no, look at this meat. Is this normal? That looks like moldy pepperoni, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the school lunch meat always looks like that. That moldy pepperoni will probably give you that lung disease you were talking about. 45? Bingo! It's right on the knot. 45. <laughs> Pneumonolotromic croscopic silo volcanosis? I missed some syllables in there. Okay, so how do you feel after learning this fantastical knowledge? Well, I'm not planning on going to any volcano, so I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Mr. Gordon. Okay. <laughs> Shut out! It's question. It's question four, Tom Andrew. Question. I'm Michael Jackson. Ciao! Woo! Give me that question. You need your microphone. No. Take your microphone, man! I don't need my microphone. You need your microphone. What? What do you mean, what? Why are fruits so fruit shaped? Why is fruit so fruit shaped?
well, fruits are shaped the way they are because of a multitude of different factors, Andrew. Uh, genetic makeup plays an important role in this. Uh, a great example of this is in tomatoes, which mutations in the ovate family of genes lead to irregular, elongated fruits. Tomato fruit shape is also controlled by the sun family of genes, which result in even more elongated fruits. Really? And tapered fruits, which if you don't know what tapered means, it means one end is thicker than the other end. Um, sun genes were first identified by Dr. Vander Knapp and colleagues. Interesting. It is very interesting. Andrew. Yeah. Did you just say breeding? No. <laughs> pretty sure you did and breeding also plays a factor in why fruits are shaped the way they are this might come as a shocker to some of you but if you didn't know we actually created lemons they aren't naturally occurring so life never gave us lemons we we gave us lemons we as humans gave ourselves lemons so never think that life gave us lemons because it didn't we gave ourselves lemons okay we gave ourselves lemons, Andrew. Okay, you got that? Yes. Well, because uh, lemons are a cross between bitter orange, which itself is a cross between pomelos and mandarins, and citron. Of course. Um, who wouldn't know that? Nobody. Climate also plays a factor in determining fruit shape. Uh, prickly pears are a great example of this because they have adapted to climate by having shallow roots that help catch rain and excess water is stored in the pads of the plant so that's why cacti of the prickly pear well just cacti in general they have those like pads on them you know what like the the fins kind of the fins they like, look like, like the fins like the paddles yeah the paddles yeah they're yeah. pads and that's where all the water gets stored so that's why they look funky in there and then the top the flower there's the fruit evolution also plays a big reason in why fruits are shaped the way they are uh, an awesome example of this is the squirting cucumber. That's its actual name. Its common name is the squirting cucumber. Why? <laughs> well, uh, they have evolved in a way that allows them to use built-up water pressure to explode, kind of. It's not really an explosion. It's not like a grenade. It's kind of like a burst. It pops, and then it, it releases seeds. And that's how the plants spread. Um, and obviously, this shape of the, the, the cucumber, the squirting cucumber, allows it to burst and pop better and to spread seeds further. It, so it falls on the ground and explodes. No, you don't, it doesn't have to fall on the ground. You can just touch it and just release it. <laughs> it's very volatile. Where, where are these? More squirting cucumbers are, typically. Yeah, that's really terrifying. I'm no. Well, it's, it's I'm, not, you're I'm not going to lose your hand. Tonight about you're not going to lose your hand if you touch a. If it explodes cube. seeds into your hand, well, they're not like high velocity. It's not shrapnel, but it's very volatile. It's, well, yeah, it, it triggers easily. And it's not like volatile as in you touch it and then boom, there goes my arm. <laughs> Here's just a taste of some of the weirdest fruits that we could find. <gasps> so, I don't know if anyone knows this, but if you didn't, you should. But uh, watermelon grows to fall out of its container, kind of like, you know, like if you pour water into a container, yeah. it fills it up. But uh, liquid, so, liquid watermelons. Liquid watermelons, yeah. Not really, though. Um, but uh, people found out that they fill out the container while they, as they grow. Yeah. And so you can get really funny looking watermelons. I've, I've seen like that. Cubed watermelons. Yeah. And those are pretty weird looking fruits. They're just watermelon, but they're more expensive and they're, they, they're squares. Yeah. Or not squares. They're not two-dimensional. It's and cubes. Everyone knows that squares taste better than circles. Cubes. Cubes, cubes. taste better cubes than spheres. Taste. Yeah. Uh, look at this weird fruit. It's called Buddha's hands. It's a... That, weird that looks looking... a lot like Buddha's hands. Yeah, and I, I've, seen, I've seen Buddha's hands. You've seen so, Buddha. Yeah. Wow. I, I didn't know you were so ascended. Yeah. I'm, I'm a very enlightened Enlightened man. individual. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that. Uh, if I ever need wisdom, I'll... Seek you out. <laughs> then there's star fruit, which it doesn't look like a star until you cut them. I actually had some of these recently. The photos you're looking at are actually photos I took. I know. Try not to get so <laughs> jealous of my awesome talent. But uh, they taste like grapes. That's it. They just taste like grapes. How many star fruits have you had? Three. I've had three all in one sitting. 
I didn't only eat them. I'm not, I'm not just going out here like eating entire star fruits. Um, where do you, where do you find a star fruit? At Walmart. They're they're, they're just there. Walmart. Yeah, you can buy them. Speaking about something else at Walmart, dragon fruits. I want to try dragon fruits. They look very yummy. Have you ever had a dragon fruit? I've never had a dragon fruit. Do you think they look yummy? Sure. Sure. Have you ever seen one? No. No. Wow. This is why I'm presenting the fruit information because I'm the fruit guy and Andrew I'm, is the enlightened guy. I, I don't eat my fruits and vegetables. You don't eat. So. Yeah. He just eats his cookies and ice cream. <laughs> Uh, another strange fruit is Aki. Uh, if you're wondering how I've even found this plant uh, or this this fruit, uh, I, I play Plants vs Zombies, <laughs> and it is a uh, it is a uh, it is a plant in Plants vs Zombies. And then I thought, oh wow, you know that that's that's a fruit, and it is. It it's, looks it, weird. It's a, it's a. So what is it? Whatever it is, I don't know. The last weird fruit we have for you today are mulberries. They're actually pretty common around here in Missouri. I have two mulberry trees. They're they're not like super common, but they are pretty common. They're they're kind of like elongated like blackberries. Yeah. They're really sweet, and they're about to be in season. So I'm going to be making um, I'm going to be making mulberry ice cream. It's very good. Uh, it it kind of tastes like um, uh, a blueberry mixed with a like a blackberry. I'd say it gives it like around that taste. All right. Um, they're very good and they look kind of weird. They I look just kind of weird. Shill mulberries, so they they're not like as weird as like Buddha's hands. Yeah. But I just kind of want to shill mulberries. I'm a mulberry fan. You're a mulberry fan. Not to call anyone out, but Team Mulberry. Yeah. Not to call anyone out specifically, but I'm not going to drop their name. But you know who you are. So one of my friends came over to my house, and they thought I was trying to poison them. And they thought instead of mulberry, they thought it was the the Mollendor berry, the, <laughs> <laughs> or the, the like the Molen berry. I think. Yeah, the Molen berry because my name's Mollendor. So they thought I was like I I like created my own berry that was like hyper poisonous. <laughs> you know who you are. You know who you are. I'm not gonna. I'm not. If you're hide. still alive after he poisoned <laughs> you, after I poisoned you with my own concoction monstrosity fruit. I'm gonna create your own mullein berries, like <laughs> create your own lemons. This is a weird coincidence of people. Would you like to hold this push or uh, Landon? Hello, Landon. Oh. Hello. <laughs> no. All of us are. What's up, Landon? We're Hi. So uh, what do you think about the first episode of our show? The first episode, uh, I thought it was really good. I thought a lot of the characters, um, it set them up really well. Oh my god. It has a lot of potential. Please do not interrupt Landon. me. Landon. As a pilot episode, I think it's really going for a big forward. fan. It's going all the way. I think it'll go for a second Love season, perhaps even seven of them, uh, perhaps even eight. Uh, and I think it's really, it really shows potential. Do you remember the title of our show? No, no, no I didn't read it. Uh, oh, you just, you can't read it? Yeah, I just flipped it on. Okay. Uh, there's the, there's the it turned off. off. And then I gave up. I had him last year uh, oh, really? for... Four? Okay. English too. English, English too. Excuse me, sir. What about me? What about you? You're in the show. Why are you guys doing this outside the bathroom? Hey, Jonathan. Oh, hey, Andrew. What's up? What's up? What do you think of our show? Oh, man, I, I just love it. You know, I love that uh, latest episode you guys did on, you know, the comparison of the Godzilla from Rugrats and uh, the 2012 Godzilla. You know, that was a great episode. Do you have any criticisms or suggestions for our show? Uh, you know, I feel like... I feel like we could get some mascots in there. Maybe f some funny hats. Funny hats? You know, maybe one day... You know that one dude on TikTok who dresses up as a turtle and does therapy for people? I think maybe we could get something like that going. We should, we should reach out to him. Yeah. 
Yeah, you had Doja Cat on his show one time. This isn't this isn't a joke. Really? This is a real thing. Yeah. Well, we also had Doja Cat on our show. Oh, yeah. word! Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. It was a very monumental episode. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. Do you, by chance, remember the name of our show? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, I think it was called the Truman Wafflers, right? Close enough. Close, close enough. enough. Yeah, yeah. So that's a pretty close. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty close. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate the show? Probably a seven point six eight. Seven point six eight. That's yeah. very specific. Is there any yeah. reason for that? Nah. Nah, I wouldn't say there's a specific reason. I just like that number. That is a good number. Yeah. Good number. Yeah, it is a pretty good number. All right. All right, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Hello, Grant Olson. What's up? So, um, what do you think about our show? It's great. It's, it's a great, great show, yeah. Great show. Very, I like the episodes. Very long episodes. Mm -hmm. um, lots of content. Love the questions. Oh, I like yeah. the little bits you guys do. Like the... <laughs> The Mario bit. The Mario bit. The Mario bit where you kidnapped him. That was really that was that was quite funny. Um, overall, yeah, just really, it's cool because I like that you guys also take it serious too. You guys have some serious questions. You guys really delve deep into, and you really, um, yeah. No, yeah. you know the name of our show. FAQ. FAQ. Yep. Oh, okay. FAQ. Okay. Um, what do you think we could work on for our future episodes? I've always, maybe some music. Some music? Some music. Maybe some background music. Because I know that sometimes some of your bits can, can seem a little empty because uh, there's no background music or anything okay. like that. Maybe some sound effects, something like that to accompany. I think that would give it a lot more character. A lot more character? A lot more character, definitely. Okay, um, okay. last question, Grant. Mm -hmm. Do you have a personal favorite member of FAQ? Probably you. Probably you. Probably you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it. You just had to do it. You had to do it. You had to do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. No Grant. problem, man. Appreciate no problem. It. Yeah. See you around. Bro See you around. <laughs> All right, bro. Hello, Jim Smith. Hello. How's your day going? It's been doing great. That's wonderful. <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith. Yes. What do you think of our show? Your show, Truman Chronicles, is very good. I think my favorite character is Isley McComas. He is very funny and awesome. <laughs> That's great to hear. Do you have any criticisms of our show or any ways we can make it better? Any ways you guys can make it better? I think that if you include slow zoom ins and panning more, I think that it will make me very happy. Very, very happy. Have you watched the movie Lilo and Stitch before? No. I have only watched Happy Gilmore, the movie <laughs> that stars Adam Sandler playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good movie. <laughs> this is a great movie. An amazing movie. Um, one last question. Yes? Um, how would you rate our show? I would rate your store at least five. Thank you! <laughs> Out of what? <laughs> that's, that's perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I just pressed his button. Yeah. Andrew, canes are better, or no? You're confusing me now. Canes are better. Is it? Yep. Okay. All right. That's good. Thanks. Okay, then, uh, yeah, just go over here. Get under here! Get under here! <laughs> Get down there. I think you gotta go a little bit lower. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Dirt. 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 <laughs> I love ACDC. Darren. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. I'm stupid. <laughs> Alright.